Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. Uh, we got an interesting one for you today, one that I'm not really interested in, but I got a lot of requests for. A lot of people ask me to do this fight, so I'm going I'm to break it down, even though I don't think it's the most interesting fight in the world. Uh, and that is Dennis Rican uh, against... Uh, I'm losing my brain. So Dennis McCann versus Brad Strand. <laughs> Dennis McCann versus Brad Strand. Uh, that's a, a Saturday's card, the Queensbury card. Uh, Liam Davies, Eric Rubbles, undercard of that. Before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, uh, all forms of social media. The Boxing Book, it comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Um, the odds makers book is they don't know what they're doing. I do. Uh, I don't gamble, but if you guys do, I'm going to show you how to consistently make money and uh, bring down the house betting on the sport of boxing. We make money every single week. Uh, we're off to an okay so We're going to keep it going this week. Uh, guys, also join the Patreon. The link is in the description. It's just $5 a month to get you all the perks. You get the lock of the week, uh, which is a really good lock of the week last week. I mean, of course, we hit the lock of the week last week, and we're going to continue to hit it, uh, showing you guys those ridiculous gains uh, that we have here that the, only the boxing bookie can show you. Uh, you get that. You can ask me anything. You can ask me a handicap fight. You can ask me to break down a fight and do a video like this, and I'll do it just for y'all. Um, and uh, this free T-shirt, it's just five dollars a month. Um, doesn't cost you money; it makes you money. Because, like I said, lock of the week, you're gonna make many, 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 many times that every single week uh, when the boxing bookie shows you how to how to make money betting on the sport. Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds uh, go to autism research and recovery. Uh, so let's get into this fight. Um, Dennis McCann. It's an interesting fight because both guys are long. Um, he, McCann's a southpaw. Sidesteps shots well. Like, he's the better athlete of the two. He's more mobile. He's got this little herky-jerky tendency to him. I'm not a huge fan. Um, he's got good timing on his counter shots. He's sloppy a little bit. He's wide open, and, and he's easy to hit. And, and, and Strand has a really good counter straight right hand. Really, really good counter shot. Um, and... McCann pulls, I mean, yeah, McCann pulls straight back. Defensively, I, I I think he's a mess. I think he relies on his athleticism and, and movement, and he's not really an athletic mover. Uh, he doesn't commit to his shots. So there's not a ton on his shots. Well, he's probably naturally the bigger hitter. Um, I was watching Strand. He's really, I mean, he lands clean shots. There's just not a whole lot on him. And he's not a guy, you know, we'll get into, into Strand in just a minute. What I don't like about, Mick Han is, he swings wild. He throws wide shots. And he, there's not a lot on him. I'm not saying, I, like I said, I think he's a bigger hitter, but that doesn't make him a big hitter. He's not a guy that's gonna, really going to dent you every time he lands a big shot. He likes to come forward. He throws his shots like he's easy to hit. You can catch him coming in. I think volume, you just touch him, you just touch him, you box him, right? And, and, and he throws these wide shots. You're going to get him to shell up, and you can turn his offense into defense. You'll get him from an offensive mindset where he wants to throw his shots in it. But now, if you just touch him, you touch him, you can get him to, to you know, keep his hands in and not let his hands go. He's not a high-volume guy. He, he looks for big shots, in it and he's not a puncher. But he's got this unorthodox movement that just makes him tough to deal with. Right, like he's he's awkward, and he knows how to use his, his little bit of movement. Even though I think he's easy to hit, at, at the highest level, it's not going to work. You know, he's got a good jab when he uses it, and he's got this little bit of unorthodox kind of awkward movement. I'm not a huge fan, but it's going to work to a degree because he's he, he's got it down. What he does, he does. He knows how to do it. Is it going to be enough against Strand? Strand is a much more fundamentally sound kind of fighter. I, I, I like Strand on paper. I like the idea of Strand. Like he, he's like an instructional video in a way. He circles well. He's, he's bouncy on his feet. Like he, he, he's trained well. Like whoever trained him did a good job trading him. He's long and he uses his height and reach, but I'm not sure that's going to be an advantage in this fight because he's also fighting a guy, a super bantamweight, who's long and tall. 
his money is his straight right hand, his counter right hand. He can lead with it, but really, he's really good with countering it. He's accurate with it from the outside. It's crisp. It's clean. It's down the pipe. I think it's it's, it's his best punch by a mile. It's really his only his only strength is that right hand, other than you know pretty decent fundamentals and, and things like that. Uh, what's got him to this level is that straight right hand, and he's going to have to land it over and over again because like I said, there's not a ton of pop on it. It's just clean. It's crisp. It lands it's straight. That's going to have to carry him through this fight. He could also be pushed backwards, which I don't like, especially when you're fighting a guy like McCann who can come forward. I, I think Strand doesn't stand his ground a whole lot, and, and that could be a problem. You know, he's not a master of fighting off his back foot like Liam Davies, right? Like it's not what he does, and you could push him back. Um, He's got the, the, the right hand, though, is going to have to carry the day for him. He's got a good stiff jab, and he's got to use that, and he's got to throw the right hand off of it. He's got to get more aggressive offensive. He's also not a high-volume guy. He's not a big puncher, right? Like, he just knows how to fight, and he was taught well. And at the highest level, his lack of athleticism, his lack of power, his lack of speed is going to affect him. But, again, I don't think this fight is at the highest level. I don't think Dennis McCann will ever be a, a world-level fighter, and I, I don't think Brad Strand will ever be a world-level fighter. Um you know, Strand lacks head movement. And, you know, is he going to get hit with some of these shots? that uh, These wide shots that, that McCann throws? Maybe. Is he going to eat his, uh, McCann's jab? For sure, he's going to eat a lot of them. Um, and he's fundamentally sound, but he's just, it, 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 it's not there. You know, he needs to move his head more. He, he, you, you, you can pick him and pick him with, with the jab. I mean, you can pick him apart. With the jab, you really can, and you know, I don't think that ultimately uh, McCann's going to utilize the jab as much as you see. But if you go back and you watch the Joshua John fight, which was a competitive fight in uh, which Strand won, Joshua John is having, and Joshua John is not a, a, a world level fighter by any means, uh, but he's having, and he has no power to speak of. He's having a ton of success with the jab. Now, he wasn't enough to necessarily win enough rounds, and I thought he won a few rounds, maybe like two out of a 10-round fight. But you could see, you could see, if you can get your jab down, you can really, really frustrate this guy. And I, I think that's basically what we saw. So let's let's pull up the odds. I, I think this is a 50-50-ish kind of fight. I do like the fundamentally, the fundamental sound and, and the fundamentals of Strand a little bit more. Let, let's, let's pull it up. I'm going to take a little bit of a gamble here um, on the money line, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to hedge that with what I think is a guarantee that this thing goes over. This thing's going over, right? Like, I, neither guy's a high-volume guy. Neither guy takes a ton of chances. This thing's going over. So I'm going to make a one-and-a-half times bet on the over. And a one-and-a-half times bet that it goes over eight-and-a-half is going to make me $40.54. $40. Now, I'm going to win that one. And I'm basically going to make a, a – uh, Get that wrong. Put that wrong. Sorry about that. I'm basically gonna take that money I made on the over, and I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna risk it. All right. I, I think Strand wins this fight. It's a 50 50 is kind of fight. I really like the odds that Strand is playing. I think McCann is flawed. I, I don't think he is what he's being made out to be. And I think Strand is fundamentally sound. I think he's got the best punch in the fight. I think. You know, both guys are not difficult to hit, uh, and, and Strand's going to find him. And McCann's going to find him, too. Uh, but I like stylistically, if we're judging this fight, I think Strand impresses the judges more with his style than, than McCann, who looks awkward at times. So I, I think Strand ekes out a decision, and, uh, you know, this might be a fight you want to bet the draw on, honestly. But I'm going to take the money that we want on the over-under, and I'm going to bet it on Strand. If I bet it on Strand... Uh, the fifty dollar bet makes me one hundred and twenty two dollars. So I mean, basically, I have a two hundred dollar bet. So I'm going to make a one and a half times bet on the over, and a half a bet. So whatever my normal bet is, bet one and a half times that on the over, and I'm going to take Strand on the money line. It's a gamble, it's a risk, but I like the way it pays. So basically, what that's going to do is it's going to make me seventy two dollars on that smaller bet. And forty dollars on the bigger bet. It's gonna uh, forty and oh one twenty two. Forty and one twenty. It's gonna make me one hundred and sixty two dollars on one hundred and fifty dollar bet if I hit it. If not, strength goes not. I'm hedged well here. I'm gonna make money on this, 
as long as it goes the over, I think we're, you know, we're not going to lose money on it. We're going to make, you know, whatever we lose on strand. If I'm wrong in this 50, 50 kind of toss of fight, we've covered that. We've hedged that because this thing is going over. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. This is what we're going with. We're going with strand on the money line at plus 245 and we're going over eight and a half rounds. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Uh, join the Patreon. The link is in the description. The link is in the description. Um, you get the lock of the week. You get. Uh, you can ask me anything. Ask me to handicap a fight. Break down a video just like this one, which I'm going to show you how to make money on. Uh, you get a free t-shirt. You get all these perks for just $5 a month. Uh, so it's worth its weight in gold. Link is in the description. Join the Patreon. Show your support so I can do these videos full time. And also, uh, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. It is March 15th, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.